give it one more minute here. Okay, so we will start now. Um, welcome everyone to episode four of our expert talks. Um, for this episode, we are going to focus on culture and people in Canada. My name is Ella Kalika, and I will be your host for tonight. So if you're watching this through um, on our YouTube channel, hello and, and welcome, and thank you for, um, for clicking on the video. Um, but if you're here and uh, you're new, um, I hope this expert talks uh, is, um, is a good one for you. And if you haven't been to one, um, or if you already been to one, uh, welcome back. Um, so before we start tonight, we would just like to make sure um, that everyone is uh, muted. Um, uh, Yes, everyone is uh, muted, so take a second to do that just to make sure. And also your uh, videos are off as well. Um, and there is also an option to turn on live captions if you are comfortable with that, or if you're more comfortable with that. If not, then you don't have to. And if you have any questions that come up during the talk, uh, make sure you just type them in the chat box, um, or you can also save them for the Q&A portion at the very end of our panel. Uh, so Jasper, could you go to the uh, land acknowledgement, please? So we're just gonna start off with this before uh, everything else in the event. And we would like to acknowledge that what we call Alberta is the traditional and ancestral territory of many peoples presently subject to treaties six, seven, and eight, namely the Blackfoot Confederacy, Kanai, Pikani, and Siksika, the Cree, Dene, uh, Salto, Nakota Sioux, Stoney Nakota, and the Tutsina Nation and the Métis people of Alberta. This includes the Métis settlements and the six regions of the Métis Nation of Alberta within the historical Northwest Métis homeland. We acknowledge that many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit who have lived in and cared for these lands for generations. We are grateful for the traditional knowledge keepers and elders who are still with us today and those who have gone before us. We make this acknowledgement as an act of reconciliation and gratitude to those whose territory we reside on or are visiting. Uh, so I would also like to mention as a disclaimer that this panel for today is a brave space. And so what a brave space is, um, is an environment that allows speakers to not only share their experience um, and their experiences, but also for the audience to uh, learn and grow from hearing these experiences. Um, just a warning that it may cause some discomfort. And if you are, uh, if you have some, dis if you are experiencing discomfort and need to step out uh, or need to um, leave the Zoom call, go on right ahead. Uh, but these experiences uh, need to be acknowledged with respect and understanding. So brave spaces are inclusive um, to everyone, despite of their race, their sex, their gender, ability, status, and experience. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get right into introductions here. Uh, Jasper, could you go to the next slide, please? Okay, so uh, my name is El Kalika. I work at the Expert Collective as a youth worker lead. Um, I am a new employee here, so I'm really excited to be here and hosting my first uh, um, Expert Talks. Um, so what is the Expert Collective uh, right now? Um, or what is the Expert Collective? Sorry, it is a nonprofit uh, organization uh, that helps individuals in many different types of scenarios. Uh, our focus right now is for the youth um, and just trying to bring them up and help them through their academics, through their um, through employment, through youth employment, if 
need be. Um, and also, sorry, <clears throat> excuse me, immigrants. Uh, we do, there is further breakdown of what the expert collective is in the past uh, episode, episode three. So if you would like to know more a little bit about the expert collective, go right on ahead. There is a section, um, I think at the start of that episode. Um, and yeah, so today, if you don't know what expert talks is and it's your first time, uh, it is meant to uh, gather experts and talk about specific topics that are of concern to um, different target audiences. For example, today, the target audience are, uh, for this topic are immigrants um, or soon to be immigrants that want to come to Canada. Um, and yeah, so speaking of immigrants, um, Canada's immigrant, or we know that Canada is known for uh, to welcome lots and lots of immigrants to the country um, every year. And for Canada's immigration goals uh, in the year 2022, it's their goal is to welcome 432,000 permanent resident admissions. While in 2023, it's 447,000. And then 220, or sorry, 2024, it's 452,000. So that is a lot of people. Um, to Canada's economy, it's very important for them to um, welcome new residents, um, not only for their uh, economy, but also for their workforce. Um, for example, uh, in 2016, there are more than 335,000 immigrants that were working in health-related careers. Um, and Canada's population is actually a growing, it's an old, older population. And so we're getting more retirees and less um, births every single year. So having more immigrants come in and helping out with the economy and whatnot is really important. And so um, as an immigrant, it's really tough ha having, uh, or yeah, being an immigrant is really tough. So this talk really centers around, <clears throat> excuse me, um, what Canada is like, what the life is, what the life here is like and the people. Um, and now we have two great speakers that are immigrants themselves. Um, that will uh, talk about their experiences here first coming to Canada. Um, so we have Mylene Sacro. Uh -huh. So Mylene Sacro, hello, welcome. She is an immigration consultant um, and she's a results-driven professional exuding with a can-do attitude. She was born and raised in the Philippines where she finished her Bachelor of Arts in Economics with a cum laude distinction. Um, and after different opportunities, she decided to enroll in immigration laws to look for a job in immigrant serving organizations. Uh, Mylene is now a regulated Canadian immigration consultant, and she owns her own um, immigration consulting firm called Propel Immigration Consultancy. Uh, she works as a full time or she works full time as a project coordinator with the Calgary Immigrant Women's Association. And she also volunteers as board director with the Filipino Canadian Women's Cooperative. Hello, Mylene. Thank you for coming. How's it going? Hello, thank you so much. Uh, everything is so far so good. And uh, I'm so privileged to be part of this expert talks. And hopefully the audience will be able to learn from our experience in settling and integrating here in Canada. Awesome, thank you so much, Mylene. So uh, in the chat, there is a link to her LinkedIn. If you are ever wanting to connect with her or curious about her, please go right on ahead and um, click on that link. And then for our second guest speaker for today, uh, we have Tabo Chinake. He is a hip hop artist um, under the stage name K The Chosen. So he was born and raised in Zimbabwe and currently based in Calgary. He is a recent graduate from the Haskin School of Business at the University of Calgary. And as a TEDx speaker and hip hop artist named K The Chosen, he believes in the power of storytelling and uses his voice to share the experiences of those around him. 
Kingdom. His last album, Advice, was released on October 22nd, 2021, and covers topics such as grief, and feminism, and mental well-being. So hello, Tavo. How's it going? It's going great. Thanks so much again for having me as part of the Expert Talks. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much for coming. Um, so just like Mylene, um, his uh, all of his social media handles are right are right in the chat. Um, so if you ever want to connect with him, he has a ton. So you can reach out on any social media platform for sure. Okie dokie. So um, with that, we are going to start off with Mylene. Um, and yes, so we're going to start off. She will be answering three questions. And the first question is, how is the culture and people in Canada? Thank you, Ella. Um, Canada is often ref uh, referred to as the land of immigrants because over the past 200 years, Canada is a very welcoming country for immigrants across the globe. So because of this, Canada is a diverse blend of people and culture. And together, these diverse groups share a common Canadian identity that make up today's multicultural society. So you may find many people from your culture throughout Canada who can relate to your experience and help make the transition to Canada easier. They can be considered as your support system and uh, who can uh, empathize with what's going on with your life and with the changes that are happening in your life as you settle and integrate in Canada. While people from the same culture is a good support system, meeting people from different cultures will also broaden your network and create social and career opportunities. Did you know that Toronto, Canada, or Toronto in Ontario is the largest or the uh, capital uh, has been named as the most diverse city in the world. Another interesting piece of Canada's culture is that Canadians are known to be overly polite. They do apologize a lot. They always say sorry and are apolog apologetic for anything and everything. So if you visit Canada and stay here for an extended period of time, chances are you will be going home apologizing to, to people about anything and everything and will keep on saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Canadian lingo may be challenging and can be confusing if you are a newcomer. So for example, Tooney means $2, Looney is a $1 coin, a Tuk is a winter hat, back home, back in the Philippines, we call it bonnet. Washroom is the term for the bathroom or the toilet. Back home, we call it CR or comfort room. Pop for soda or soft drinks in other countries or soda. Timmy's, of course, you know, Timmy's for Tim Hortons and the double double, meaning double shot cream, double shot, uh, what's that, sugar. And then when you, instead of saying Z or Z, no, Z, then you say Z. So that's the Canadian way of pronouncing Z. The use of A, right? So at the end of a statement, A is an interjection or an abrupt remark. It is used to ask for, say, confirmation or repetition or to express an inquiry or used in anticipation of the listener's or the reader's agreement. So A, is actually considered now as the marker of Canadian speech. It's freezing, eh? And the list goes on with regards to the terms that Canadians use. And of course, part of Canada's culture is the weather. This is actually a, the most favorite topic for small talks or when you open a conversation. Then an endless conversation about the weather, or about the hockey, about hockey will, will start. So it's like, it's freezing, eh? Or it's so cold in here, eh? Or nice weather, eh? Okay, so, uh, so I guess that's it for just an overview about um, uh, Canadian people and uh, culture. 
Thank you so much, Mylene. That is actually very, very insightful. Um, I didn't realize how much I've learned, to be honest. I've been in I've been here in Canada. I've been in Canada for 10 years now. Um, and there's it's actually a very different culture compared to the Philippines. Um, mm -hmm. So thank you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, and, and yeah, that, that is a lot of information. There is more if you ever come here um, and if you start living here. <laughs> uh, and now we want to ask you for uh, a second question. Um, and we want to ask advice on how to adapt to a new environment, either in general or specifically Canada. Okay, thank you, Ella. So Philippines used to be my comfort zone. So it takes actually a lot of guts and courage to leave your comfort zone and move to a country that's considered as uh, an uncharted territory for you. But moving from a less developed country like the Philippines to a well-developed or a rich country like Canada is actually an enticing thought. Even if you already have a very established career back home and you have a very good source of income. But then when you land in Canada, reality will hit you. My first few years in Canada was a roller coaster ride. As I adapted to this new environment, I felt fear, excitement, anxiety, frustration, confuse, confusion, homesickness, and all the other kinds of emotions. But over time, this roller coaster of emotions will vanish and you find yourself well adjusted to your new environment. So how did I adapt to this new environment? First, I had to embrace the change. So you need to embrace the change, the change in your environment, the change in your circumstances, the change in the culture, the change in your career, and maybe even the change in how to raise your children. It's a different way in here. Back in the Philippines, I can really like scold or spank or shout at my children, but in here, you cannot do that to your children. Second, of course, you need to learn the language and the culture. As the saying goes, when, in your, when you're in Rome, do what the Romans do. So when you're in Canada, do what the Canadians do. But then, of course, without compromising your own values, your own culture and heritage. Third, you look for volunteer opportunities. Volunteering provides you with the much needed Canadian work experience and to have a better understanding about Canadian workplace. So like, especially here in Calgary, it's actually big deal if you had some volunteering experience. So I actually started first as a volunteer and then became a client of these immigrant serving organizations and then become a staff, became a staff member. And then of course, fourth is you attend networking events. It's also very important to attend those networking events. But then when you go to a networking event, you have to be prepared. You need to have your, they call it your sales pitch, or you need to prepare how to sell yourself modestly, actually. Although you need to elevate yourself, but in a way that it's still like very modest, just to give your, a listener, a background, or a knowledge about you. So you get to meet new people, it will enhance your language skills, and who knows, that person whom you connected will open the door to your career growth or employment opportunities. And then fifth is the access to support services available in your community. This is very important in uh, helping you settle and integrate into the community. So what are these support services, like the language support services? Uh, there are cases where in English is not the first language from their back, from their country. And so there are interpretation and translation services available from these organizations. There's also the employment services, transportation services, childcare services, housing and family services. So there are like a very big suit of these services offered by these organizations in your community that you can access when you land in Canada. While it's very scary to move out from your comfort zone, it's never wrong to explore 
and to discover the unknown. That will enrich your experience and later on your life. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much, Raileen. Um, that is a very, very good answer for sure. I remember coming to Canada as a child. I was 10 years old and, and it was really tough on my parents. So I, I couldn't even imagine um, moving out here um, as a young adult um, or even just an adult in general. So thank you so much uh, for your advice on that. It, it really is hopefully helpful to, to a lot of people. Um, and for the last question, um, you were talking about uh, services and organizations. Are there any um, specific ones that you can talk about or, or that you personally care about that helped you settle and adapt to your new environment? Thank you, Ella. Definitely. I'm not where I am right now, if not for these groups and organizations that actually supported me during my first few years here in Canada. So the first immigrant serving organization that I approached was the Bredin Center for Career Advancement. That's in Edmonton. So I received support in job search, resume writing, and mock interviews. That's when I realized that our resume back in the Philippines is a no-no here in Canada. Because like our resume in the Philippines is like you pull up, uh, include all those personal information that you need not to share it in your uh, like prospective employer, right? So like, for example, in the Philippines, you add your photo, you add your, your marital status, number of children, and all those personal information. And so when I uh, received this support from Breden, it's like an eye opener for me. So it was like a totally different resume. And until now, like, I'm also like giving back and teaching to also my clients how to prepare their resume even com before coming here to, to Canada. So that's bred in. Another one is ERIC. It's known as the Edmonton Region Immigrant Employment Council. That's again in Edmonton. Actually, I first uh, lived in Edmonton for two years before moving to, to Calgary. So I received career mentoring support uh, because like if you want to bridge your profession back home and uh, you want to, to, to work in the same field, then uh, ERIC is the uh, go-to organization. In Calgary, uh, it's called CRIET, so the Calgary Region Immigrant Employment Council. So I was partnered with an economist because I've worked for 15 years, over 15 years as economist or economic development specialist with the Philippine government. And uh, so uh, I received uh, the mentoring support and uh, uh, connected with other economists in the city of Edmonton. It's a very cool program with uh, this uh, Eric and it's so nice to be mentored by already like the Canadians and all our experts in their field. And then when I moved to Calgary, I of course approached CIWA, the Calgary Immigrant Women's Association. CIWA actually provides over 50 programs and services to newcomers and immigrants, such as settlement and integration services, language training and childcare, employment and family services. So CIWA is now known as the biggest settlement agency in Canada on gender-based support because our niche at CIWA is to help immigrant and refugee women. And of course we extend to their families like their children and also their spouses. So actually I started at CIWA as a client. So I'm a graduate of their language no, the labor market bridging for interpretation and translation. So I'm also a certified interpreter and translator uh, because of that program from CIWA. And then I became a volunteer and now I'm a full-time CIWA staff member for almost five years. So, so that's what I'm talking about, about volunteering is you are actually now setting your foot on the door of your prospective employer. Although when you volunteer, do not expect so much from the organization like okay i volunteer because i want to get a job no that will that is not your motivation your motivation is to gain that canadian work experience and there are a lot actually of immigrant serving organizations across canada 
And I can actually like provide you a list of those immigrant serving organizations that you can uh, approach when you land here in Canada, in Canada. And they offer a lot of programs and services. And since these are funded by the government or other uh, corporations, then most of the trainings, if not all of the trainings are actually for free. And yeah, so that's about it. Uh, thank you so much, Mylene. That is a lot of information, but it is very helpful information, like I said. Um, so for sure, uh, for anyone who is watching and didn't catch, didn't quite catch that, we're definitely going to be posting um, the list of groups and organizations that she had mentioned. Um, in our social media. So if you are interested, you're watching and you're interested, please go right on ahead uh, onto our social media pages um, because we will be posting that uh, shortly after the panel. So thank you so much, Mylene. Um, yeah, uh, those, are, those are all the questions that we needed to ask you for today. Um, that was a lot of information, but we, I am very glad, we are very glad that it's recorded. Uh, so just in case if any, anyone would like to catch what she said again, uh, just rewind the video um, and, the, and all of the information will be right there. But thank you so much for your time, Mylene. Um, and please, if you are interested in uh, connecting with her, like I said, her LinkedIn is uh, in the chat. Um, and yeah, or just search her up on Google, Mylene Sacro. Um, she will be, I'm pretty sure she will show up for sure. <laughs> but thank you again, Mylene. Thank you for your thank time. You, okay, all righty. So now we are going to move on to, we're going to move on to Tabo. Um, so yeah. Alrighty, so our, our second wonderful speaker, Tabo, uh, our first question for you is, when did you first arrive in Canada and how were you able to adapt to the new environment? Awesome, thank you. I just wanna say thank you again to Mylene. That was, uh, there was some things that you mentioned. I was like, yeah, that is a very Canadian thing. I didn't think about that <laughs> until you mentioned it. So that was awesome. Uh, so I've been in Canada for about seven years now. Uh, I came as an international student in 2015. It would have been about around September because I'd come for my first uh, year of university uh, at the Haskins School of Business at the University of Calgary. Um, so I will say just from the different people I've spoken to, I think sometimes immigrating as a student can be one of the easiest ways to adapt to a new environment, just because you're with a group of similar people going through the same um, change, right? I think sometimes if you're coming alone as a family or in other um, situations, you might be isolated in that experience. Whereas as, as a student, because we all start the school year at the same time, there's a high likelihood that you'll find other students from other places, even if they're not from your country, but um, it's a similar experience coming to a new territory. Um, so I was lucky in that sense that um, I got to live on campus for the first two years. So I was in the wing, um, they called it the international wing. So that's where the wing that had everyone from other countries. Uh, so, you know, used to spend a lot of time in each other's rooms, just talking about our different countries and where we're from. Um, I'm also blessed that I'm a musician as well. So part of my, um, I guess, learning of my environment came through going to shows and performing myself. And I find that I've grown quite uh, the community here in Calgary through music. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much for your answer. Um, that's actually really cool. Uh, I go to University of Calgary myself and there it's quite a diverse population actually at the U of C. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of, when I first came here in Calgary, I knew no one and I was kind of jealous of the international students because they were already knowing each other through residences and, and that was really cool to see. So I'm glad that you had a positive experience when you first came here um, and that you got to know people uh, or the Calgary community through music. I'm actually kind of jealous of that because <laughs> I have a hobby of music myself. <laughs> so I'm really glad. Um, and so for your for the, our second question, um, 
how was the lifestyle in Canada compared to your home country? Like what were the differences or what were similarities that you found? Um, and did you experience any culture shock uh, when you first came here? Um, and only if you're comfortable, um, just uh, talk about the experiences um, that you had. For sure. Uh, great questions. Um, so I think when it comes to lifestyle, um, there's a bit of bias because obviously when I, I was coming, I was just leaving my teenage years. So, you know, one big difference is the fact that my parents went here. So <laughs> I had a little more um, independence and freedom to do what I wanted. Um, but I think with that, it made me a lot more aware of my environment where, um, you know, quite often when you're in a family setting and you're around people you know, sometimes you take things like safety for granted. Um, so being able to like go on transit systems late at night and um, take the train. And I found places were fairly accessible when I first came. Um, but as I'm getting older, I'm like, no, actually Calgary is hard to get around because the communities are so far from each other. But when I was in university, obviously all I needed to do was be on campus. And then when I moved off campus, I just moved to someone else super close to campus. Um, but, you know, now post-graduation, I'm starting to see, well, places are pretty far from each other. Um, so just learning that, you know, it's a very, I think there's a lot of connections in immediate communities, but sometimes it's hard to make those connections in ones that are a bit further out. I think especially given that Calgary is essentially built into four quadrants, you've got the Northwest, the Northeast, the Southeast, the Southwest. And, you know, when you have friends in the Southwest and you live in the Northwest, it can take up to an hour to find them um, and even more time in winter. So I think going into the question of culture shock, I was not prepared for the cold. You know, I thought I was, but I was not. It was not a fun time. Uh, I think, you know, I was like, okay, cool. I'm excited to see snow. I saw snow the first day. Awesome. Saw snow the second day. Awesome. By the third day, I was done. Um, <laughs> I didn't want the snow to be here anymore because, um, you know, it was kind of getting in my way for plans to do things. But obviously also it's just cold, you know, especially with our Calgary winds that, the chill really cuts through your clothes. Um, so I quickly learned the importance of winter shopping because um, you know you can't, no matter how many layers of summer clothes you have, it's not enough <laughs> to keep you warm in winter. So that was the first culture shock. Um, I think with that also came just the feeling of different seasons. You know, I think when you listen to Western music or um, watch uh, Western movies, they, they're very focused on, you know, you know, this summer or this spring, you know, because there's actually a difference in the feeling between seasons. Um, back in Zimbabwe, we essentially just have two main seasons. It's the rainy season and the dry season. So dry is cold, rainy is hot and summery, but very wet. So, you know, you kind of split the year into two sides. Whereas here, I've now noticed, you know, like in fall you know things are getting more professional people are going back to school people are going back to work um so it's a very focused period in the year winter obviously we're getting a bit more festive as we get towards the end of the year but also i find that the city actually kind of slows down you know because it's cold no one wants to go out there are no events going on and then spring comes and things are slowly opening up again and summer ah oh, summer is the best time you know so that was such an interesting thing to experience because you go through this cycle every year you know so almost having to like mentally prepare myself for winter months because um i find although you've got the four seasons they're not equally distributed you know it's not three months of each it's more like you get two months of summer and then winter goes for as long as winter feels like he wants to be around and I definitely felt that in second year where it got colder and I started questioning myself I'm like why did I come to this faraway country that's so cold you know and that culture shock um, it really led to me feeling um, kind of like feelings of regret like I, I missed my family um, I wasn't too sure what I was doing in my degree. So I was very close to actually quitting. Um, being like, you know, what? I'm jumping ship. I'm going home. Like, this is not for me, you know? So I'm grateful that like the friends around me and uh, music itself was able to keep me around. And, you know, I graduated successfully. But um, yeah, it's definitely something where you can take it for granted that the seasons can have such a huge effect on you. And sometimes being conscious of that can help you prepare for that, uh, that shift in, in the year, uh, especially because I think wintertime is also like 
it might just be me, but I feel like for students, that's the hardest exam time. Um, maybe it's because you're exhausted from fall and now you're going back into winter. So, you know, you've got tough exams going on. It's cold. Nothing exciting is going on. So it's really important to think of your mental health at that point. I think it's very easy to get uh, to be susceptible to, you know, uh, feelings of loneliness, feelings of homesickness, culture shock and things during winter. I mean, it can happen all year round, but definitely winter is the time when it hits you um, the hardest. Um, other culture shocks that I went through was just language. <laughs> just, you know, um, uh, Zimbabwe is a British co colony. So we speak um, British English and then coming to Canada and sometimes speaking American, sometimes speaking British really used to confuse me, especially in university because um, I write all my words with O-U and, you know, some um, American spellings are just the O, you know, we use S, sometimes here it's a Z, you know, so what would happen is I would write reports and then someone else would have to translate my writings to Canadian English because I had no idea which way to spell words, um, but also just accent where um, I worked in a service industry job for a little bit and I think when I came my accent definitely leaned more towards a British accent. Um, and most people could not understand me because of that. So I would say, hey, um, would you mind passing me that glass over there? And they're like, that what? The glass over there. And they're like, what? Sorry, the glass over there. Oh, glass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. I got you. You know, and it, it's small things, but it actually gets annoying because you're like, I know what I'm saying. You're just not listening to what I'm saying. Um, so it's almost like code switching where you now have to kind of pick out, okay, which words do I have to say with a, a different accent? Um, but after seven years, I think I, I, I naturally switched between the two or now my accent has become a combination of everything. Um, yeah, so that's kind of been my experience uh, in uh, coming to Canada, Calgary, and just the different culture shocks and adaptations I've gone through. Thank you so much for your answer. I can, I can actually relate to, to a lot of those. I think my accent has shifted from this kind of Americanized Filipino accent to something that's more Canadian. And now my parents make fun of me for it. Right. <laughs> so yeah, but yeah, especially I think the winter months are really, really tough for sure. It, it kind of sucks that um, schooling falls into those months where it's sad, <laughs> sad, and like those months are often associated with sad and depressing. Um, yeah. But yeah, I for sure I can definitely relate relate to some of your experiences, and and I'm glad that you have you continued. You're still here, and and it seems like that you are doing really well for yourself. So yeah, thank you for your answer. Thank you so much. Um, and I think that is it. I, I think that those are all of the questions. Now we are on the Q&A portion, which will, which will give the speakers um, an opportunity to answer the questions. Um, so yeah, both of the speakers. Uh, and I think we have um, a few here. I think one of the questions that really, uh, that, is kind of hard at hitting um, for me personally. Um, is Canada life what you expected it to be? So is Canada what you expected it to be? Is the life here what you expected it to be? So I think we can start off with Mylene. Oh, Mylene, I think you're muted. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, so that's actually a very tough uh, question. So um, when I actually filed my application as a federal skilled worker back home, um, my agent or my consultant said that, oh, you are an economist, you are an economics uh, instructor in a post-secondary institution. So when you land in Canada, you will also become an economist or an instructor or even a professor. So I was, I was expecting to be um, working in the same career when I land here. But then when I came here, reality is that I worked like two survival jobs at the same time. And it's not even closely related to, to my career or my background back home. So I work as a cashier 
at Superstore. Just imagine working as a cashier and then, and then also I got a job with the, the HSBC back then as a personal banker. So I consider this a survival jobs because like for me back then, all I wanted is to bring food to the table for my children, just to work, work, work. And I don't care now whether I'm working in the field that I really wanted. And it took me several years before I get out from that survival job and to refocus on my career. And it's, and it's actually the career planning that paved the way for me for all these opportunities now that I have. And yeah, it's actually when you're not prepared, when you are not well researched, you don't have that informed decision or the, the relevant information that you need, you will be disillusioned once you arrive here in Canada because you have so much expectations and you think that life is always good in here. No, unless and until, of course, you network, you connect with the right people, you connect with or you um, access those resources and tools, then you will have a good life even for your children. But if you are so picky with your job, if you don't want to go out there and you just want to do the, the career that you had back home, you will be doomed to fail. That's it. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much. I, yeah, for sure. It's when you land here, it's kind of like survival of the fittest. You know, you just try to do what you can to, to keep your head above water, let's just say. So yeah, that is, thank you for the advice, actually. That's very, very helpful. I, um, doing your research before coming here is definitely important. Um, but even then, I, I think it's very different when you're doing your research and when you experience it, you know, but having informed decisions are, are important. So yeah, thank you so much for your answer. Uh, Tavo, how about you? I'd definitely like to piggyback on the uh, focus of um, research. So uh, being a musician, when I applied um, to Canada, obviously there's so many different provinces. Uh, so each province has their own thing going on. Uh, so I ended up picking Alberta and then specifically the city of Calgary because I was told that, you know, this is the most sunshine that you receive in Canada, as well as um, the festival center of Canada. So one of those two things was correct and definitely the sunshine, like <laughs> relative to all the other cities, we receive the most amount of sunshine throughout the year. Um, but, you know, in comparison, the su sunlight here is not as strong as it is back home. So even then I'm still like, oh man, I need more sun than this. Um, but also the one that wasn't as accurate was it being the festival capital. So I thought, oh, wow, there's going to be a diversity of music, a lot of things going on. And I didn't realize that they meant country and folk music. And I was like, ah, that that's not what I was looking for. Nothing against country and folk. I just happened to be a hip hop artist. So that wasn't the industry I was looking for. Um, but I will say that I've, over the last couple of years, I think I've seen the music industry diversify. Um, but just that thing where it's like, you know, sometimes you need to do the little extra step to like, okay, what does this statement mean? Um, and I think something else that I've noticed uh, in terms of my expectation and the reality in Canada is that um, Canada obviously has this reputation of being, you know, the friendliest place or super kind country, which I think it is. The people are very polite, um, but obviously there's still a lot of... Um, colonial history here there's a lot of um you know discrimination and um relationships with other countries that canada still needs to face especially for us as immigrants i'm sure we've seen like during the pandemic where we started to get a better idea of how different groups in canada feel about immigrants and i think it's it's in a weird way, it's it's heartbreaking because, you know, you want to hold on to this ideal view you have of Canada. But I think it's also more heartbreaking that it's, it's just a reflection of kind of where the world is at, right? That no country is perfect. Um, but I think in Canada's case specifically, it's, it's heartbreaking when, um, you know, you see um, ill treatment of um, immigrants, but more so of those who are indigenous to the land, right? We are all visitors here. And, you know, if you can't even treat visitors well, you know, when you then look at how those who were originally on the land were treated, you know, it, it's, it's a really sad thing to see. So for me, um, that's one thing I'm hoping to see Canada work on is just its relationship with indigenous peoples. And I think as they work on that relationship, 
it'll automatically improve relationships with um, immigrants because it's just a matter of having respect for, for different people and their backgrounds. Thank you so much for highlighting that actually, that is a very big issue in Canada. Um, and yeah, it was the same thing for me. I thought it was all unicorns and rainbows over here, but no, it's not there. It's just like you said, a reflection of the world where it's at and just, just definitely putting a spotlight on um, on the treatment, the maltreatment of um, indigenous people, uh, peoples is is very important. Is very important to 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 um, to see to see improve for sure, especially with the government. So thank you for highlighting that. Actually, uh, and another question uh, that I think would be interesting is if there is something you can say to your past self when you first started coming here, what would it be? For example, if you were talking to your past self, what advice would you give him right off the bat? <laughs> I think we'll start off with uh, Miley. That's very tough. Um, okay, so maybe like, uh, so if I'm looking at myself maybe 10 years ago or say 15 years ago, I would say you shouldn't have left Philippines. You should have stayed and continue your career as economics instructor. And who knows, I'm already a lawyer right now. So, but then there's no turning back. That's like just the initial, but then I, I, I love Canada already because like it's what uh, my, my children love it here and they're having a good life. They ha they're having a time of their life. They have established their own careers. And I guess that's already a success for me, even though I wasn't able I wanted but then seeing my children happy well settled purging their own career paths i'm already good with that one so no i won't say that to my old self i would just say good choice good decision that you brought your children to canada yeah, I would say the same thing for my for my parents. My dad definitely regretted it for the first couple of years, but I think seeing how successful our family is here now, it's it's you know you regret it at first, and then you keep going, and then you're like, I guess I'm here. I guess I'm doing good. I guess my my family's doing good, and you just kind of stay. <laughs> so thank you, thank you for that. Yeah, uh, Tabo, how about you? Um. So jokingly, the first thing would be um, invest in toilet paper because the last two years of the pandemic, I would have made so much money. <laughs> but obviously these are things you can never have predicted. Um, but on a serious note, I think just the importance of um, being proud of your heritage and where you come from. I think it took me the long way around to get to that, you know, coming to Canada, I was like, oh, okay, I've got to be more like Canadians now. And like I said, switching my accent to things like that. Um, but I think in my later years, I started realizing that people love um, hearing more about Zimbabwe. They love that my, 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 my music is all about the immigrant experience. And so, I mean, eventually I ended up where I needed to be, but I think had I started off with that pride in the beginning, you know, I would have been so much further along um, and also would have brought so many more people with me, right? You know, there's a lot of people who end up letting go of their identity to try and assimilate into um, the Canadian system. Um, but the whole point is majority of us are immigrants anyway. So, you know, why don't we all embrace who we are? And that creates a stronger um, community and stronger um, identity of self, really. Um, so yeah, just being proud of who I was is what I'd say to my younger self. That's actually really good. I, I personally also struggled with that. I think it took me like three to four years to accept who I am as a Filipina. Um, Cause it's really tough. It's really tough. You just want to fit in, you know, you just want to, you just want to be in this Canadian bubble. And sometimes you make the decision to just get rid of your own culture. You know, I made that wrong decision. Um, and similar to you it did take me some time to get around and accepting who I am for sure um so I think that is really great advice is to just to to just keep your culture as as best as you can so yeah thank you for your answer um I think personally for me this is just a fun question um 
I don't know if you two are well versed in the, the geography of Canada, but what do you think is the best place to go to? Which province? <laughs> so I think we'll, again, we'll start off uh, with Mylene. Why me always? Okay. <laughs> um, still, I'm loyal to Alberta because of the Rockies. I love the mountains. I love nature. And yeah, I, I'm just in awe every time I go to Banff and as far as Golden, BC, like the scenery is just awesome during summer, during fall, winter, like it's awesome. And it's, uh, you cannot, it's beyond compare for me. Like, and then, but then of course, um, Niagara Falls is in my bucket list and I have to see and uh, go to that place uh, soon, maybe. But still, I'm loyal, loyal to Alberta. For sure, the Rockies are beautiful. We're so lucky this, you know, just like less than an hour drive away. I think that's, I'm happy that I live here now. I used to live in Saskatchewan, um, but now that I live here, it's like so close. You can see it from Tuscany Station, like the, the farthest of the red line. So pretty. Um, but yeah, I am also quite biased now. <laughs> Uh, how about you, Tavo? Um, yeah, so I mean, Alberta is awesome. Uh, I did my best to try and go to different cities each um, summer vacation so I could get a better idea of what Canada is like. Um, sorry, if I had to pick a place, it would be Vancouver. <laughs> I think it's just the, it's weird though, because it's not like the weather is necessarily better. It's just not as cold. It's just super rainy. Um, but for me, I feel like Calgary is a great place to come as an international student or just someone new to Canada, because I think it's, you've got a lot of uh, modern systems in place, but it's a bit slower than the other cities. I think Vancouver and Toronto and Montreal are a bit more up to speed. Uh, Calgary, I guess, being a younger city is still getting to that pace, but that's great. If you're new, it's, it's, it's a beautiful pace to like, um, get into. Um, but once you're comfortable, it feels slow. So that's why I would do Vancouver and just there's more art to, to, to get involved in. Um, but I won't lie, like I love Calgary. I think Calgary, the people are friendlier. It's uh, cheaper, it's more affordable here than it is in Vancouver. And then overall, like the sunshine is, 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 is great. Um, I'm not going to pretend that I like being on mountains. So, you know, I love seeing them. I don't want to be in them. Uh, <laughs> so I guess that's another reason why I like Vancouver, like just being in the city and having lots to do, but like the beach is there as an option. Um, but honestly, I, I would say like, ideally, you'd go to somewhere like Vancouver, um, like in your younger years that you can go and explore, have all the adventures you like, and then come back to Calgary and settle. Because I think it's a great place to um, raise kids. It's a great place to like, um, find like a permanent position and just like settle down um, yeah I'm glad it's actually really shocking to me that you think Calgary's slow because I come from a small city in Saskatchewan and coming here drivers drivers were crazy to me I was like why is everybody trying to get into different lanes that like in a span of five minutes I don't get it um but for sure, I, I love Calgary as well. And and I think Vancouver is also my on my bucket list. I've never been, even though it's just right there. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you for, for your answer. Um, I think we have one more question. And this is just in terms of, um, this is for the audience, for people who are interested in coming to Calgary or maybe Calgary, uh, coming to Canada, um, or just being immigrants in general. What is um, advice that you can give to someone that can ease their nervousness when moving to Canada? So Mylene, I'm going to start off with Tabo now, okay. <laughs> and then we'll get to you later. <laughs> Go ahead, Tabo. Oh, you tricked us there. You're like, Mylene first, then you're like, I'm switching to Tabo. I was like, oh, <laughs> I wasn't ready. <laughs> um. Honestly, I think regardless of where you are in Canada, like I said, it's such a, a diverse country. You will find people who um, are going through a similar, you know, um, adaptation of their new environment. So um, I think just taking note of the many resources that Mylene mentioned, you know, just 
reaching out to people, volunteering. Volunteering is great. Um, I did a lot of volunteering with um, clubs on campus as well as Pride and, and other things. And I met a lot of um, friends who I still have today. So, you know, not just about building your work experience, but building your community, right? If you're doing volunteering or are pursuing one of your hobbies, let's say you're into tennis or you're into music or into painting, chances are you'll meet other people who are into that too when you engage in that hobby or um, that um, volunteer experience. And before you know it, you'll, you'll have your own little community. So, you know, just knowing that, again, I guess the whole message being just, if you stick to yourself and, and being who you are, you'll find other people more naturally than rather trying to see what everyone else is doing and trying to like fit in that box. That is very good advice. Uh, reaching out to other people for sure, joining, finding a hobby, especially with other people that are similar to you is, is very important in trying to network and trying to build that community, like you said. Uh, so thank you for your answer. Uh, okay, Mylene, it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, actually like feeling nervous or uh, anxious is actually normal. So just accept that, embrace that one, but don't dwell on it. Okay, so it, it's normal to feel all those kinds of emotions when you are new to a certain country that it's unknown to you and it's your first time and you don't have uh, your own relatives. Like for me, I actually don't have relatives when we came here with my children. And so I was actually on my own. But like, for me, this is just a setback that's a setup for a comeback. So accept that every setback is a setup for a comeback. Don't be discouraged with any setbacks. That is normal and just accept. But then as I said, don't dwell on those. Network, connect, connect, and connect. Build your support system, uh, starting from your own community or your own culture, and then expand your, your network. And as mentioned, volunteering, uh, joining some organizations, those are cool ways to ease whatever negative feelings that you have. That is very true. I think migrating to a new country can be very isolating. And so just finding people who are similar to you, if it's hobbies, volunteering, uh, through your work, it's really important because it just makes the process of trying to settle here a, a little easier. So those are all very good tips. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for your answer again. Uh, and I think that's it, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, thank you for our lovely speakers. They're great advice, insight, knowledge, experience. Like I said, if you need to, um, if you need to contact them, just search up their name. We have Mylene Sacro, and then we have Tabo Chinake. Um, but I think you prefer K the Chosen because those are most of your social media Hi. handles. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, if you ever want to connect with them and want to talk to them more, um, yeah, go right on ahead. Thank you so much, you two, for spending your time with us and, and just really giving us great information on uh, what Canada is like, what the people are like, and also your experiences. Because um, like I said, it is quite relatable and it it is very helpful to know, um, to know for sure. So yeah. I think that's it. Thank you so much. I love this. I love talking to you guys. It's so cool. <laughs> um, but to our audience, um, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, and if you ever want to rewatch it, you know, just as a background noise, I don't know, information, whatever you want to do, um, it is on our YouTube channel. But before that, please make sure you fill out our survey. Um, just in case uh, you ever want to uh, make a comment, suggestion, concerns, anything like that, that will be uh, in the chat shortly. Um, and like I said, we do have a YouTube channel that we post all of our stuff in, all of the expert talks. Um, yeah, if you want us, if you want this as background noise, go on ahead. If you think this was really helpful, rewatch it, whatever you want to do, just don't 
plagiarize any of the answers. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so this, again, this will be posted on YouTube. And I think it will also be posted on our Facebook page since this was not a uh, live stream. Um, so we have those as well. And please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. And thank you everyone for watching. And thank you for our lovely speakers, for our audience, um, and you two were awesome. Thank you so much again. Oh, you're most welcome. It was a pleasure. Thanks for having us. It's, I hope you guys take care. And yeah, I hope you have a good night. All right. You too. Pleasure meeting you, Mylene. Same here, Tavo. <laughs> Bye.